James Crazy. That's me! Hey everybody, welcome back to James Plays Tony Hawk's Underground 2. We're here in the Free Skate level select because, as I said last time, the return of Classic Mode also means the return of Classic Levels. There's an assortment of levels from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, 2, and 3 making reappearances here, but since we have not actually seen them in Thug 2 yet, there are gaps that we have to collect. So when one of these levels comes along, we will do an exploration to get all the gaps, then we will switch on over to Classic Mode to get those goals taken care of. So let's jump on into the airport, which is... Now apparently located somewhere in Japan, it looks. The airport is a level returning from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, which was released within the same console generation as Tony Hawk's Underground 2. So there should not be too much different about the level. They pretty much just pulled it out of one game and plopped it down into another. Not too much difficulty in doing so, as far as I'm aware. There may be a couple of slight little differences that I'll point out as I see them, but for the most part, this is just that level. The airport is interesting because it joins Downhill Jam and the Mall from the very first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater as being one of the few linear style levels. Meaning we have a start point that we are you know, starting at and everything kind of leads towards an end point, you know, a start and a finish. And it's interesting that they went back to that for if only one level in Tony Hawk 3 because those other two levels from the very first game were actually a holdover from when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was envisioned as more of a racing game with tricks. Think of something maybe like SSX or Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam, which came out many, many, many years later. But yeah, uh, a racing game, start to finish. But they found that people would get to the end and then just have so much fun screwing around, doing tricks and stuff like that while waiting for the other racers to finish, that they shifted gears and said, hey, what if we just made the game all about doing tricks and, and goofing off and just, you know, more, more open in its design and approach. So with that said, let's go and get some gaps done, shall we? We're gonna head on over here to the x-ray machine. And we just want to do a manual through here for x-ray. That's one change right off the bat that I notice is no longer will the game have a bunch of flashing lights as you go through there. And I'm very thankful for that. Now, it may not look it, but you can actually grind on the edges of this conveyor. And we'll just go around until we have an opportunity to side jump and grind on the other side for heliport baggage. Here we have a helicopter, and this may or may not be another change. Um, my memory might not be so good, but I believe in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, you could grind the blades of this helicopter and send it flying, much like you could in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 with the hangar level. But here, the helicopter's not going anywhere, if, if it ever did. Like I said, I could be misremembering. You let me know, okay? I would appreciate that. But instead of sending this helicopter on its way, we're just going to air over it and get helicopter hop. Now we're going to get back onto this conveyor and we're going to jump and land in a grind on the escalator rail for through the pad. Now we are here in the baggage claim area. We're going to grind this rail here and then jump and land in a grind back on the escalator rail again. And this time we get claim hop. Now we have a ramp to ramp to do over the escalator. We're escalating the situation. And now we gotta just make sure we're nice and straight as we head for a lip trick. Or 
spotted bags. One last gap for the baggage claim, and it'll actually take us out of the baggage claim as we gap over the security check, kicking off of the x-ray machine here for Mulin. Now we're just gonna run it back to the start. We took essentially one branch to the middle of the level, and now we want to go back to the start to get a handful of gaps that we missed. Now we have the men's room here. You know, great meeting of the minds take place in, in such locations while people do their pees and poops. We have a rail that heads on in. And we're gonna grind that, jump, grind the urinals, land in a grind on the rail out for draining the vein. Now we have this strange bit of architecture here that we just have to grind down for a local call. It's a very strange thing. I don't know what this could be. Some kind of, I don't know, interface, maybe like virtual reality or a teleportation machine. I don't know what it could possibly be. Yeah, I, I don't even know if that bit of sarcasm works or not. I have not set foot in an airport in a very long time. For all I know, they do still have phone terminals. But, uh, yeah, the last time I was in an airport was going to and from some relatives who live out in Wisconsin. And I remember when I was there in Wisconsin watching the series finale of Jim Henson's Dinosaurs. And you might say, well, that's a, a very weird, specific thing for you to be able to remember. But those of you who have seen the series finale of Dinosaurs completely understand why something like that would stick with you, especially a young, young boy from, uh, that has to be, like, at least 20 years ago. But yeah, uh, moving on, now we're gonna launch off of the phone terminal and land in a grind on the light fixture for illuminating. Now we have this walkway here, and this area that I'm standing on right now is what I'm gonna call the middle rails. And we have walkway hop, which is grinding one side of the inside rail, and then side jumping and landing in a grind on the other inside rail. Not something that we can do with much ease, given our stats and everything. And even without our stats being maxed out, as it is when you're in free skate, it's still not an easy thing to do. So what I like to do is drain my special, go into switch just to be safe, and do a standing grind, which means no forward momentum, just jump straight up, land in a grind, we're going nice and slow, and then you can just make a simple side jump, land in a grind, and then you get walkway hop. Another walkway gap to get is grinding from the start to the end for walkway ride one. That may suggest there is a walkway ride two, and you would be correct. Good on you for paying attention. Now we have a couple of lockers and then a couple of departure screens down there, and we need to do a series of grinds from one to the next. And no, I totally missed at the end there. Okay, that's, that's the magic right there. Let's try that again. I, I landed in a grind too late to uh, get that last jump like that. So yeah, you get a, that final jump and grind onto the light and you get the hard way up. Back here at this ramp down and we want to launch up and hit the light fixture. And I'm going to slow down time as we do some side jumping and then some more side jumping to get drop in science. You have to jump off of the light fixtures a little earlier than you might think. You're not riding them all the way to the end. So just slowing things down makes it a little bit easier for me to gauge when to do that, especially when I'm, I'm talking to you, the audience, my, my dear friends, my only friends. 
we have this gate sign up there and we have some more departure screens in front of us that make for little launching ramps here and we do a lip trick for flying high in the sky now much like there was a men's bathroom here is one for women how about that and that guy's just going on in like nobody's business but that's fine because he's not the worst perpetrator of illicit acts in the women's bathroom but much like we did with the men's bathroom, we are going to be grinding the rail in. Jumping, grinding, landing in a grind on the rail out for S Lookout. You may have noticed the walkway here. And, like I said about walkway ride 1, there is walkway ride 2. And as we are seeing quite a few repetitions with the gaps. We have another phone terminal that we launch up, land in a grind on the light fixture for lighten up, and another security check that we launch over for O the S. And there's even some more repetition, launching off of this middle section to a light fixture, landing in a grind for last highlight. Head back for a quick second, and this time we're going to manual down the slope. There we go. There's, this is essentially another difference from the levels, is we used to have security guards who would kind of intercept you at certain points and knock you over if you collided with them. And that was kind of incentivizing you to get through without uh, crossing their paths. These are just the guards from Berlin, I think. And they, they don't care. But that was part of the challenge for getting the plane tickets at the start of the level and bringing them all the way down here to where your friend was who needed those tickets. Now, instead of your friend, here is Pegleg and a rollerblader apparently uh, getting ready to go on a nice romantic trip together. Now, this next gap is called Musical Chairs, and it's a very interesting gap. We have these series of couch benches, and there's a few of them located around this area here. We need to grind one set, and then grind another set. Now, with enough uh, stats and enough... just a little bit of luck, maybe, even, you can actually grind these couches and then launch far enough to land in a grind on another set. It will not count for the gap. You need to do a manual between the two grinds. Another thing is you see how I did that grind and it it kind of lined me up to go towards the other set. That's what you need to do. If you, say, grind like this, this part, and I do a manual, and I go over here to grind this, it won't register either. It needs to be with the, uh, with everything lined up. So, there we go. And the musical chairs. Very strange gap with a lot of, uh, strange restrictions. Now I'm just going to make sure my special's topped off. Because we're going to use a special trick for this next gap. It's called Off the Couch. And essentially we are going to be hitting this quarter pipe. And then doing a manual all the way across the, the gate departure area. To the other quarter pipe on the other end. And I have a, a uh, special trick called the Poly Butt Manual. And I actually, you know, plop down on my butt and I drag myself along with my hands. And it didn't register probably because of the separation in, in tricks there. But yeah, this special does propel you forward. So you can maintain momentum. You don't slow down when using it. 
And this wasn't by design at all that I chose two different manuals. One which will speed me up and one which will bring me to a dead stop. But here we are. So it's actually a pretty handy trick to use when you have access to it. Gonna go over here and we have a couple of little rail hops to do. We have this gray rail, which gives us the gate transfer. And then we want to get onto the red rail here. Now nothing's... okay. My controller disconnected. Let's try this again. We want to grind the red rail, same way that we did a grind on this rail there. And we get gate hop. Okay. And it disconnected again. Nothing can ever just go right, can it? All right. We got these spiral ramps heading down to the loading section. We're going to grind. We get these spiral stairs north. These these are not stairs, game. Don't know what you're thinking. But let's just go over to the other end because if there's a north, then you might assume, and you would be correct, that there is a south. Sorry, hope that doesn't ruin your vacation. All right, now we're here in the, the loading section, and there's a couple of gaps down here that are a bit frustrating to me. We have light pop and light hop. Light pop is where you grind this ledge here and then transfer over to a light. And sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't. Light hop is grinding a light and then transferring to another light. And again, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Then finally we have rail hop, which is grinding this red rail and transferring over to this ledge. And that worked first try. That's That makes me very happy. Can you tell the inflection in my voice how happy I am? All right, I'm gonna slow down time just to make this a little bit easier for me, maybe, possibly. Okay, we got light hop. And we got light hop. All right, now you can definitely hear the happiness in my voice. Because everything's coming up Jim Jam. Except for the, my controller disconnecting like it was. <sighs> Let's take a look at our gaps. See if I missed anything. And I did. We have these two lip tricks that we have to do while we're down here. And you can see some spots where there's some arrows. Those are some good indicators on where to try doing a lip trick. But some of them are a little bit more going around the, the edge than others. So you're not going to be able to hit as straight as you would want. So this one I think will be okay. So there's the economy class lip. And then we just need to do the business class by... Getting a lip trick on the next rail up. No first class lip though. That's just too pricey for us. Now you might have seen that there is one last gap for us to get. And it's called start to finish. You may be able to guess what that entails in this linear style level. Where there is a, a start and a finish. So, going through any of these gates with the police line tape in front of it will teleport you back to the start. I believe that was a new addition to bringing this level back. Which comes in very handy, though. We're, we're back here at the start, and I'm actually going to drop a save state. Alright, are we all set, everybody? We need to do a combo from the start of the level to the end. Whew, we did it! Oh my goodness, that was rough. But we did it. It, it actually was a little rough. Because you have to figure that out in the first place. There's essentially two checkpoints 
that you have to cross while in a combo. And the first checkpoint is when you enter what the game considers the start of the level, and the second is when you get to what the game considers the end of the level. It doesn't matter how you get to the end of the level, so you can use this baggage conveyor to teleport you right there, as long as it's all part of a single combo. And that's probably why this gap is only worth 600 points. But you can do this the hard way if you are so inclined. There we go. And we got 773,000 points along the way. Not too bad. Obviously, I could do a lot better. And I have. <sighs> Maybe I will... I will aim to get a higher score than that when we go into classic mode. But that should do it for all of the gaps. You got a good lay of the land here for how the airport is laid out if you've not seen it before. So now let's go ahead and switch over to classic mode. And by the way, with those gaps, in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 3, there was no gap checklist. So you weren't incentivized to actually go and find and complete all the gaps in the levels. So in some cases, this is the first time we're actually collecting gaps for some of these levels. Anyway, the airport being a very linear style level, it makes it hard to route the way that I normally would. Instead, the game kind of tells you what you're going to be doing. And what the game's telling me to do this time is quite different from the, the norm. We've got a suspicious package right here that we're going to grab. And then we're going to go right on over that helicopter. Now, there's a stat point that we can get, looking right through the fence there. We're getting stat points on our first, first go, and we're not getting score. There's another suspicious suitcase. We'll head on out. Suitcase number three is located in the women's bathroom. Then we are going to launch over the security check for a stat point, and right behind us is suitcase number four. Launch off the phone terminal for a stat point there. And now we're just going to run it back, or, or skate it back, to the beginning, getting that K. And now we'll stop here and launch up onto the light to get the S. Manual down the slope. Now we're going to launch up, get off our board, and grab onto the sign. And then we can just run and jump off to catch that stat point. Continue onward. You can see the A right there on top of that little tree. We're going to climb that little tree and nab that. Hit the light. Get that T. Going to go for the E. And we got it. Oh, that's beautiful. I had a backup strat for that, and I didn't need it. So, yay me. And right here is the final suitcase. And right here is the final stat point. So there we are. We're kind of, sort of doing the, our runs a little backwards here, in a, a reverse order. Where usually it's the stat points that we get in the second run, and the scores that we get in the first run. But I just, I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. I let the level tell me what to do. And this is what the level told me what to do. I don't, uh, like, like all normal people, I listen to what video games tell me. Now, we're gonna change things up a little bit here. We're gonna finish off rail, but then we're going to take a bunch of stats back from Switch and fill up manual and start putting points into run. We're at that point where we've collected enough stat points that we can fill out rail and speed and manual, some of the really important stats, 
And then we're, we're close to finishing off Run, which may prove quite handy sooner rather than later. And Switch doesn't serve as much of a purpose now that we've got some of these very important stats maxed out. So I, it may make a difference. You know, it, it, I this is how I feel I want to go with things. Like, Switch was a crutch to start off with, and now we don't need to rely on it as much. Just like we don't need to rely on Focus as much. Uh, we're still going to be using Focus a lot. But anyway, time for that second run. All right, let's build up special before we get onto our combo line. We have a long walkway here, so it's a good idea to hit it with a special, get those points going. We're riding the lights, so I hope you got those side jumps down. After the M, you want to ride that light out to the end before you side jump so you can hit the next couple of lights there. Let's slow things down. Put a 900 here. Just keep using that poly butt manual to keep our speed going as we go for another 900. And how about another 900? Huh? Just 900 all day, every day. And let's just finish off with a little victory wiggle, huh? Okay, 2.5 million. That's a bit higher than 770 something. Now, with over a minute left, we just have to get that secret tape up there, which I believe is the exact same position it was back in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. So just like in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, you just want to launch up off of one of these gates. And we missed the proper rail. That's fine. Be that way, you smelly jerk of a game. Okay, let's take two here. There we go. Now we're riding high. And that takes care of that. That's the, the benefit of having over a minute left to do one goal. If you screw it up, there's no pressure. None at all. Just for the sake of it, let's go ahead and grind some flags with our remaining time. This was one of the goals in the original Pony House Pro Skater 3 version of this level. And as you can see, you can still hit the flags and get little little things to come up. But it's not a goal this time. Just a personal goal of mine, to rip down every country's flag in the world. So there we go. Compared to the previous levels I've done up to this point, a bit unconventional. But rules are meant to be broken, aren't they? They're, they're guidelines for a reason. And I'm not, you know... I'm not a slave to them. There we go. All goals. All stats. Next time, we will be exploring the school, returning from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. So I will see you guys next time. All right. All right. Love ya. Bye-bye.